In this video I am going to show you how to create a drop shadow onto any image that you are uh, wanting to add a drop shadow to and we're going to show you how to do that in Photoshop. So here's the image that I'm going to add the drop shadow to. I've already got it open here in Photoshop. Your image when you open it might have a locked layer to it. It might have a little lock here. If you just double click this you'll get an option that will show you background from layer. Um, so when you do that, just go ahead and convert it to a background from the layer and then you'll see that um, if you just double click on it, if it's got the lock on it, just double click it. And then what you're going to do is go ahead and add a new layer and we'll go ahead and click OK. And now you'll see that that layer is on top, but what you want to do is move it to the bottom and then go back to your top layer, just select it and go uh, Image, Canvas Size and you want to make the canvas behind this image bigger than it actually is. So you're going to go 7.7 .7. for example. You can do this in pixels too. Sometimes I like to do this in pixels because I find it easier. So we'll go 780 by, just make it bigger. It doesn't really even matter because you're going to crop it in a minute if you want to. Um, so we'll just go 780 by 520. So now you'll see we've added the space around the outside of our image. We've got that around the outside there. And what you want to do now is go ahead and double click this layer. And when you double click that, it's going to bring up these options. And you'll be able to preview it right on the image. So watch when I add the drop shadow, you'll see a little drop shadow show up here. And actually my drop shadow was set at an angle that I don't want it at because I want the drop shadow to be over on the right. So I've got a drop shadow added here now. And then I also like to add an inner shadow, which is going to add a line up top here. Uh, but if we want the drop shadow to be pretty strong, we can make it more, we can make it less. You can see it expanding and contracting here as I scroll in and out there. So we'll just set this back to about 75, 76%, whatever there. So we're going to go ahead and add the inner shadow that's going to add a shadow right here. And you can look and see if that gives you the kind of look that you want. But for me, I think that gives a pretty good look. And so we'll go ahead and click OK. All right, so you can see that we've got that outer image on there. And in fact, that other layer, that inner shadow might be a little strong. So what I'm going to do is leave it on, but I'm going to just pull it down a little bit too. I'm going to change the choke to two, change that to two. So it's a little bit less intense now on that image. And I'll go ahead and click OK. So that's going to give me what I want there. And then if we want to see what it's going to look like, we'll pull the layer out <laughs> so you can actually see this. And what I'm going to do with this layer, I'm going to just paint the layer white so that you can see how the drop shadow looks. So on this layer, I'll just select white. I'll go ahead and use my paint tool and go ahead and make that background. So now you can see you've got that drop shadow on there. And if you want to see what it looks like without the drop shadow, you can just turn it off. You see that the drop shadow really makes it a nice effect just to give it sort of a standoff from whatever page you're going to put it onto. So that is how you create a drop shadow on an image using Photoshop. So then to make sure that your image um, maintains its background, there's a couple of things you can do. You can go ahead and save it with this white background behind it in the layer, or you can undo what you just did as far as the layer goes, and you can leave that layer transparent, or you can undo what you did by making that background layer white, and you can go ahead and save this as a PNG file that will save the background with the space there. What I would recommend doing though is going ahead and cropping the image. I mean you want to include your drop shadow but maybe you've got a little bit too much sizing there. So we'll just go ahead and I'm just going to pull this down. And now my drop shadow is preserved in there and I've got my image so I'll just go ahead and go file, save as, and then you can save it as a PNG file. You can't see that because it's off of your screen here. But um, if you go ahead and save it as a PNG, that's just one of your options in the drop down. And um, I'll put that in my images folder here, T, what comes with T. And we'll go ahead and click Save. It's going to ask you if you want to interlace it. I always just say None, but you can interlace the image as well. And then when we go ahead and open this in Firefox, you can see I've got T, what comes with T, PNG, and you can see the difference here even looking at it, just looking between those two. But I'll just go ahead and open it here. 
And now you can see what it's going to look like with that drop shadow on it. It just gives it a nice offset from the page, especially here. You can see it really well. Uh, it just gives it a nice offset so that whenever we put it in on the page, it's going to look really nice uh, with that additional drop shadow. So that is how you add a drop shadow and uh, then save it as a PNG or you can save it as a JPEG too if you want, but it will keep the white around the outside if you save it as a JPEG. Whereas if you save it as a PNG file, it will save it as a transparent file. Thank you very much and for more great helpful tips about how to make money online, come to 3moneymethods.com.